John Anderson is another man who escapes uh, from slavery to come to Ypsilanti. He's born Edmund. Uh, and we, we, one of the, you know, sometimes you make that decision right away. And there's a phrase called being sold down the river, if anybody's heard that slave and that, or that phrase, and that comes from slavery. And that means even if you're held in bondage in Missouri or Canada, to be sold down the river, the river being Mississippi River, to the plantations of Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi was a death sentence, right? So to be sold down the river means to be uh, to sent to, to the worst place you can imagine. John Anderson, uh, he works for the, if you look at a map of Missouri, find Sullivan, Missouri. That's where he would have lived. It's named after the man who owned him, Stephen Sullivan. Uh, Stephen Sullivan, um, uh, we mostly think of pe people enslaved in this country as working on plantations and agriculture. And of course, that's primarily what people did. But much of our industry, much of our infrastructure in this country was also built by uh, enslaved people and worked by enslaved people. And John actually was rented out by his master to the saltpeter mines of Missouri. And so he worked in mines. And when he was coming back from the mine to the plantation of the Sullivan family, he saw a man on the porch he knew to be a uh, slave seller. And he thought, I'm sold down the river. And he immediately started running, right? And he says, so he had to make a decision like that to escape. And he says that he could feel the bullets whizzing by his ears, but he said to himself, keep running, keep running. They won't shoot you because you're worth $1,100 to them. They won't shoot you, you're worth $1,100 to them. He makes it to Chicago and eventually he makes it, and I would love to know this how this happens. He makes it to um, uh, Manchester in Southwest Washtenaw County, and he would end up owning a small farm. I don't know how you go from slavery to owning a small farm before the Civil War. He does that. He owns a small farm uh, and he exchanges that farm with E.P. Allen, who's a white politician here in Ypsilanti for E.P. Allen's property on 303 South Adams. And he would move to 303 South Adams. He would marry a woman named Lucy York, who's the grandchild of uh, people who settled in Ypsilanti in the 1830s. And they would uh, live in Ypsilanti for decades and have many, in fact, he had three sons all named Fred, Alfred, Frederick, and Fred. So if you're, if you're trying to study the Anderson family, it can get quite difficult. But he, he would have seen his great-grandchildren born on South Adams Street, John Anderson. Uh, even though he escaped from slavery, he would have joined the Union Army. He was in Company A of the 102nd United States Colored Troops and would have participated in the Civil War in liberating thousands of people in the plantations off the coast of South Carolina. So he is not just a person who freed himself. He also helped free other people. I want to say a little bit about what happened to the Sullivan family in Missouri. Stephen Sullivan, um, John Anderson's owner. Remember, Missouri is a border state. It does not secede from the Union, so you can still have slavery even after the Emancipation in Missouri, Emancipation Proclamation in Missouri. But Stephen Sullivan is found guilty of supporting guerrilla, uh, Confederate guerrillas. Uh, and because Missouri is not a seceded state, it's a crime, and he's executed for that crime. So John Anderson's owner is executed during the Civil War for supporting Confederate guerrillas, and two of the Stephen Sullivan sons are, uh, are shot by Union cavalry after refusing to surrender uh, in their guerrilla activities in Missouri. So I think the Civil War was a revolution, and it changed dramatically the position of people. So John Anderson, born Edmund, will live the rest of his life as a free man in Ypsilanti, and none of his, the people who owned him would have survived the Civil War.